This man is on the run from the Cook Report. He knows where a toxic waste tanker has been illegally buried. Very nasty stuff, we're told. Tonight, it's about to be dug up in Cheshire as the Cook Report challenges the waste industry to come clean. It's just a matter of time. It could be four months even before I die. That's the way you care for the environment, is it? If you don't get out of there, I'm warning you, I'm going to hit you. If you don't go away with that camera. Good morning, Dr. Willits. I'd like to ask you why it's... The Cook Report, knee-deep in rubbish, has been working undercover and in disguise to expose the negligence, if not the greed, of much of the waste industry. There are large areas of the industry still, despite the fact that uh, there are some responsible companies that are acting in a manner that is illegal, highly dangerous, and creates a potential hazard for future generations. The muck and waste business turns over four billion pounds a year. One of the biggest waste firms says the industry is in an ill-controlled mess. We have lobbied consistently for much heavier, much better enforcement of the legislation in the UK uh, up and down the land. We suffer greatly from people undercutting us. We suffer from people who, who operate on the fringes of legality. And that can lead to real problems, below and above ground. Problems made worse when you happen to live right next door to a depot which stores waste chemicals in drums. Well, it was awful, actually. We, uh, we thought about the horses' uh, safety straight away because we don't really know what's in those drums. And Jane and Ernie Clements have had trouble with the neighbours before. Yes, we have actually. We heard it was being pumped down into the sewerage and it was coming up the plug holes of the sink. So I actually passed out with the smell. Ernie came home from work and found me in the kitchen passed out. The government boasts we've got the most efficient self-regulated system of waste disposal. But on this, one of Britain's 3,000 known landfill sites, there's a bit of a panic. Seven Trent Water are the ultimate owners and we've caught them out, not bothering to check the waste they accepted for landfill. We knew it was harmless, they still don't, and now they're worried. This is the load that was brought in by JR Foot Waste Management. Why is it here? Because we're suspicious of its contents. Too late they'd realised that when we put the industry to the test, they'd been found wanting. Our paperwork said we were dumping waste contaminated with paraquat. Too dangerous for them to handle, no questions asked. But handle it, they did. Landfill sites, like this one, where the vast majority of Britain's industrial and domestic waste end up, by their very nature, don't yield up their secrets easily. This one is said to have a dark secret. Buried 30 feet underground, a complete tanker, the contents of which were too hot to handle. We've traced the man who buried it and the man who gave the order. Indeed, Paul Bennett did a runner in someone else's lorry after spilling the beans to the cook report and then changing his mind. So, tell us about the tanker full of toxic waste that you ordered to be buried. At first, he said it was his public duty to talk because the tanker was a toxic time bomb. Very nasty stuff, we're told. There you go. But then it transpired he was trying to blackmail his former company into giving him his job back. Me that you ordered it buried, knowing full well what it was. The man ordered to bury the tanker was Steve Lloyd. It was straightforward enough. I just cut the, just got the burning gear out and cut the, sh cut the chassis off. Um, the foreman on the site dug a hole. We pushed it into the hole. And then I stood on top of the tank and cut two holes downwards in top of the tank. And we got a JCB and filled it with the sand. Records show that then management had been told the tanker had been buried illegally. Pardon? I'd been led to believe that we had to do it on the right day because you, 
would be able to smell it 20 miles away when we opened the food. Didn't it strike you as a rather odd thing to be doing? <laughs> yeah. But you ask no Difficult questions. Difficult questions, then, aren't they? Now, come on. You know you've done wrong. Right. Yes, you do. And we have witnesses to it. And you've been messing around, pretending to do a public service. You've tried to use At the time, the Paul Bennett was regional manager for several local waste sites. He now faces prosecution, and we face the task of locating Mr. Bennett's time bomb. To be fair, this was a problem created yesterday. The government says the waste business has changed today. So what we need is some plain speaking. And I'm going to start by talking rubbish. <laughs> I want it to be better, cleaner and safer. So today, at this moment, I am publishing the legislation that brings all these together. The bill that heralds the new environment agency. Britain will lead the world. And that proud boast is now being put to the test. Under the new Environment Protection Agency, the so-called duty of care laws require everyone in the waste disposal chain to be upfront and honest. The paraquat we were pretending to carry is a deadly and carefully controlled poison requiring specialized disposal. Time after time, our paperwork was ignored, a false description given on the receipt, and the money readily accepted. They failed as others would fail in their duty of care taking short-term profit and leaving potential long-term problems for others. The problem on this and six other estates in Sevenoaks is gas. Gas venting from the top of specially designed lamp posts and generated from old landfill sites below. We have got methane and carbon dioxide in the ground. Not all properties are affected. In fact, the majority are not but there has been a minor explosion at one of the houses. We brought in a consultant to confirm methane levels, which even when not immediately dangerous, are more than enough to blight the estate. Worse, the council wants to force the residents to install equipment to deal with the problem the council itself created when it gave permission to build on a landfill. They're trying to force us to have this device fitted in our roofs and indeed, not just force us, but actually threaten us with legal action if we don't comply with this. Mary Madison, who's 80, was advised that a realistic price for her house would be £215,000. But many months on, still can't find a buyer at tens of thousands less. It makes a very big difference to your life because most people regard the house these days as their legacy, if you like, to their family. The gas affects the lives of every age group. Even the fields alongside the school playground have to be vented. The council, meanwhile, insists the residents don't have a problem. The council are not really interested in whether we can sell or not. They tell us, oh, there's no problems, these houses will sell. But I don't see any of the councillors rushing down to buy one. From the air and on the ground, the search was now going on at Risley in Cheshire for that illegally buried toxic tanker. Such a giant site is filled in stages. The first stage, designed for domestic waste, which would harmlessly leach into the water supply, was almost finished when our witnesses say the tanker was buried on top. Above that went the so-called capping. Two metres of clay and another ten metres of waste was then dumped on top of that. So where exactly is the tanker? See, this is a map of the, of the site as it is now. Can you remember where you buried the tank? Well, it was buried approximately there. It's behind cabins, diesel tanks. Just approximately there. On site, he confirmed the precise spot. To the Deputy Chief Environment Officer of Cheshire's Waste Regulators, Eamon Murphy. 
and that would be the front end and the back end. Our next witness was surprised the burial had taken place on a Sunday evening. I would have thought so. I would imagine it was done very secretively, so nobody could see what was actually happening to the tanker. Next on site, Billy Glover independently pointed to the same spot, under the watchful eyes of the present site owners, UK Waste Management, who promised prompt action. Okay, Mr. Glover. Well, clearly the evidence that uh, your programme has put to us was sufficient to make us believe that there was something suspicious in the way of a tanker in the site. And we have agreed to take action very, very quickly to find out just what that tanker is and what it may contain. That means digging it up? If necessary, that's what we'll do. The immediate area is measured out and cordoned off. Next will come the geophysicists with specialised detection equipment. Later this afternoon, this more or less is what they'll begin to look for. Imagine this, 30 feet long, less chassis and less wheels, buried 30 feet down, secretly and illegally, in there. Another day, another load. We knew the waste we'd made up was harmless, the industry didn't. And when they eventually became suspicious, it was too late. Altogether, we made 14 visits to nine sites. Only twice did the system work. Only twice, as we should have been, were we turned away. Otherwise, site staff welcomed us with open palms. Cleansing Services Group were the only ones to come clean. They were wrong to accept the waste and fired the man on the gate. Lee Environmental, one of the country's biggest operators, tried to bluff it out. They took our waste, but said under the legislation there was no onus on them to check it. Good morning, Dr. Willits. I'd like to ask you why it is we were so easily able to dump potentially dangerous hazardous waste on a Lee environmental site. And why it is you're ignoring your duty of care when your own professional body says you shouldn't be, and so does this QC's opinion. Indeed, the QC said that under the duty of care laws, the licensee must inspect the waste adequately. His reaction was typical of the waste industry we've dealt with. Only talk when forced to, and then say their failure to protect the environment was someone else's fault. That's the alleged incident at Chesterfield. It's not an alleged incident, it's actually what happened. No. Um, we did not take anything illegal into our site. There was nothing illegal that went on on our site. We declared, it, we, de we declared it to be illegal. No, you didn't. We that did. It's on been dealt with by correspondents between my company and yours. No, it's been dealt with with rather arrogant sorry. dismissals. Sorry, sorry. When you tell us you have no duty of care, and would you like to read this QC's opinion? This is a QC's opinion which follows that of your own professional body in that you do have a duty of care and you can't stand back and say, you can dump... You have not discharged it. You allowed us to discharge potentially noxious substances which we declared as such. And he's part of an industry leaving a potentially lethal legacy across the country. This is a major pollution disaster, one of the worst incidents of groundwater pollution this country has ever seen. Everybody but everybody is walking away from the problem, and it's, it's the people who live here, the people who pay the council tax and the rates in this area who will eventually have to pay for it. It's going to cost tens of millions of pounds to clean it up. On this abandoned landfill site, 2,000 gallons of pesticide a week were dumped for several years and are now leaching into the water system. The site owner has left the Rivers Authority to clean up. The site operator could have done far more than he has to overcome these problems. It would have been much more helpful if they'd worked with us and um, rectified some of the problems that they've caused. Instead, the managing director, Keith Broom, simply handed back his license, as the law then allowed, and walked away to another job in the industry. Do you hold the operators responsible? I don't think it's for me to make that judgment, but their actions speak for themselves. Mr. Broom, Roger Cook from Central Television, I'd like to ask you about your concern for the environment. 
why you walked away from Hunt's refuse, leaving other people to pay very, very large debts to clean up the polluted mess you left behind. What do you got to say to that? <laughs> what are you going to do about clearing up the debt and the mess that you left behind? That's the way you care for the environment, is it? Ian McCready is now dying as a result of a rare cancer of the bladder. He was employed to dig out the cutting for this trunk road through an old landfill site, a toxic one as it transpired. As the excavation of the ship was nearing, um, basically they were looking for people to volunteer to work in the pit. Nobody wanted to, and a couple did, you will get a couple. Um, they were given white suits, wellingtons, and a black gas mask, and a methane monitor that hung around their neck. When the methane levels got too high, they'd press a air horn and everyone would run. Ian McCready obviously didn't run fast enough. A former worker on the original landfill site explained it contained a lot of chemicals and waste from the leather industry. The doctors said his kind of cancer was usually only found amongst leather industry workers. Any uh, leather offcuts and uh, oh, like evidence of tanneries? Loads, tons of leather offcuts from this and, and well in by our cattle coming here. Uh, I, went, I went to see the specialist and I've been told that as it stands as I sit here now to do nothing it's just a matter of time it could be four months even before I die or it could be six months for the children's sake I'm trying to make a future for them because I feel I've been taken away from them robbed and they've done nothing to deserve this At Risley, the geophysicists are now on site. The operation could cost UK waste management a quarter of a million pounds. Um, 2.5 metres. And then, of course, above it, you've got D, which is the depth of burial. We've found something substantial. Um, it's hard to be sure what it is without doing some more analysis here. UK Waste, a rapidly expanding company, hopes they haven't purchased a big problem. We've looked at some 150 landfill sites over the past couple of years, and it would be fair to say that many of them do not meet the standards that our company would operate to. Many of them don't have any lining systems, don't have any gas, don't have any leachate control systems. And in this day and age, we don't think that's proper. They're just holes in the ground? They're holes in the ground operated under the old dilute and disperse system, and some of them start Someone, hopefully the new environment agency, really needs to start checking what's happening with these holes. In fact, the new law is not entirely toothless. As this van driver discovers as he tries to evade London waste regulation officers. Get in the car, get in the car. The real trouble with the new law is that it's only patchily policed. One of the difficulties that has been recognised is the fact that you've got differing um, approaches to waste regulation in uh, different parts of the country because of the number of waste regulation authorities that there are. There is also the need for um, a network of um, information and intelligence about activities uh, both within the country and also within Europe. This man is an unlicensed waste carrier. They've been outlawed this year. Just get him out of here. I'm if, gonna, he, if, if he, he don't get out of here, I'm warning you, I'm going to whip him. If he don't go away with that camera. Well, come around this Every side. commercial waste carrier must now be local authority licensed, as we were. This site is run by a waste management firm called Biffa which in turn is wholly owned by Seven Trent Water. Their staff took the waste, and when they read the paperwork, also took the mickey. You've got some farm waste. <coughs> Once again, the paraquat we declared was ignored. 
In this case, that paraquat could have leached into the water supply. Well, this is an unlined site on a major British aquifer. So it has groundwater in it, and that supplies public water supplies in various parts of this area. And so it's not suitable for receiving toxic waste or harmful materials. The site's unlined, which means that anything dumped in here can be washed through, seep out, percolate down into the groundwater below, and eventually reach a borehole. Devon Trent should know what it's like dealing with contamination problems. This crisis in Worcestershire wasn't their fault. Even so, the contamination meant they had to shut off water supplies to 100,000 homes. The possibility of paraquat in the water appalled John Henry of the National Poisons Unit. To allow dumping of paraquat in areas close to a water supply, to me it's an act of negligence. Until the last minute, Seven Trent and Biffa hid behind a fax machine. Then, along with the rest of the waste managers, behind an industry spokeswoman. I would say that there are problems with the duty of care. Um, it's possible for there to be loopholes in the system. Um, the, the law itself requires people to act in a reasonable way and doesn't go beyond saying that um, to describe what might be reasonable. And you, as well as I know, that one person's reasonable behaviour is another person's unreasonable behaviour. Now, the code of practice that's officially issued by the government um, couldn't possibly attempt to describe how the duty of care might be applied in the millions and millions of practical situations that occur on a day-to-day -day basis. Yet it was pretty easy for us to go to these sites, 14 different visits, and only be pulled up twice. So the system can work, it, it but, can but mostly work it didn't. And largely it has. Well, not in our case it didn't. The duty of care concept was originally championed by Joan Ruddock. I shall certainly, on the evidence of the programme, be writing to the Secretary of State for the Environment to ask what is being done, whether there are sufficient inspectors, what he intends to do to improve on the situation, and I'm quite sure my colleagues will be asking parliamentary questions. Back at Risley, even more questions are being asked as the first of the heavy equipment needed to investigate the tanker arrives on site. The local authority now believes it may be even more dangerous than originally thought. There is strong evidence of a breach of regulations on this site. The company is cooperating fully and we will undertake a comprehensive and scientific investigation to establish exactly what that breach was. UK Waste will now sink bore holes to physically locate the tanker. And the drill will bring up a core sample to establish exactly what its toxic cargo was. This particular problem we've got here, it can shape public confidence. The company uh, and the industry needs to be aware that the regulations have to be adhered to and we will see that they are adhered to. The industry was never going to be easy to police, not when the evidence is buried as a matter of course, and one success story with a cooperative company is no reason for complacency. Well, next tonight on Scottish, Tom's in big trouble as we continue the story of family conflict in Sydney.